Something around here looks a little bit different. Do, do you know what it is? We finished building the sorting system. Look at all of those hoppers. Also, the, the resource pack for these is broken. Like the arrows, they point to the right, yet they're, they're facing forward. And anyways, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Yes, I built the storage system. It was designed by Cybot2419, and it's sort of an upgrade of our Season 6 storage system. If you need a refresher, the idea of this system is that you put your shulker boxes out of your ender chest in front of it and it can sort everything back into it. But it does mean that you need to keep every single slot in the shulker boxes filled up. So I'm going to be changing the way I do my storage here. So if I got some items to be sorted, they go in here. Any shulker boxes full of junk up the top. Seems I forgot to put a sign there. And then empty boxes end up in here. There we go. That's, that's much better. I have many things that I want to do this episode. I've got a long list of notes because I've been really inspired for a couple of projects. Brand new projects. But first of all, we're just going to head round the back here. I'm going to show you what all of this crazy redstone looks like. Goodness me, that there's tons of it, right? Look at all those torches. Yes, this thing is an absolute beast. And what it does is it takes the items and sort of cycles them round in a loop like this going down through all of the hoppers at the front one by one into our shulker boxes. So not every item is going to get sorted and then they're going to come down to the bottom here and as you can see they're going to make their way over to this side up an item elevator. I haven't actually built the redstone for that yet and then it goes across this huge filtering system so we got some mass storage set up over here and then at the other end the items come through here and if they haven't been filtered out they will make their way downwards. And you know where this is going to go, right? Oosh, I love using this thing. So down, down, the items come, and then across all the way over to the front here. Like, a little bit ugly, but actually not too intrusive. They will then end up in the final sorting system, this one that we've already built. And of course, all of this enables me to get more organized and whatnot. What do I see just over there? You are not supposed to be oxidized. Look, I miss one. I have made some changes in the nether, but before we head through to there, apparently over 30% of you watching have not subscribed on these Hermitcraft episodes. Hey, if you keep watching them, why don't you subscribe and then get notified of when they come out? Any who's all, I have dismantled my previous nether tunnel and replaced it with just something simplistic and cozy. Look at this. Sometimes it's just nice to have a simple repeating structure to walk through to get to your nether portal. And I tell you what, I'm really chuffed with these results. So I know that you have not forgot by now that we are in the race for the Ark of the Champions. And we will be here for just a moment letting you know I'm still logging on, doing these things like every other day, and we are still in the lead. One of the shards that we are after though is for all of the advancements. We're going to do some more advancement hunting today. But before we set on our way, let me give you a little teaser for something we're going to be doing later in the episode. It will involve a laze. I have an idea for a farm design and I couldn't quite get over the last part of it and then today it hit me. Eureka! You know, the laze could help us out. And uh, looks like they've been trying to escape. I haven't popped back here in a while but this is definitely concerning. Well, I'm glad I doubled up the entrance here. That seems to sort of lock them in the middle. If I throw some shards on the ground, will that even lure them out? I, I'm definitely concerned for those ones stuck in the door area. Oh dear. Well, if they get stuck here and don't escape, does that mean that I can just pull them back into the room? I thought oh, the top one came. Oh, and then that one, and then this one, right? There we go. Excellent. Oh, and look at that. We made one diamond. Just one little pathetic diamond. Anyways, we're going to spend some diamonds over here at Impulse's bookshop because I need to get my hands on a crossbow for a secret advancement. And it revolves around this enchantment, and some of you will then probably know what I'm going to do. However, this will lead to some other interesting activities. I have an idea for a mini game we might try. But first, we've got to get all prepared for doing this advancement. Do you know what I have? A lot of streaming services. Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Curiosity Stream, the list goes on. It seems a lot of us have this problem and it's starting to get pricey as the services add up. Did you know some of these services offer different content based on what country you connect from? So you may only be scratching the surface of what some of these streaming services actually have on their platforms. 
With ExpressVPN, you can change your location to another country and access thousands more shows and movies. The Shawshank Redemption is available on Netflix in Italy, or you can watch Top Gun on French Netflix, or all of the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter movies on Turkish Netflix. The list goes on, so if you are looking for more to watch and you don't want to sign up for yet another subscription service, then ExpressVPN is a great way to get more out of the subscriptions you already have. Head over to expressvpn.com slash Asuma, use this link and you can get three months for free. Use the link in the description box to sign up today. So the advancement we shall be undertaking is a hidden one known as Arbalistic. It should be somewhere around here. And the goal of this one is to kill five unique mobs with one crossbow shot. And so the easiest way to do this, probably with passive mobs, we've got a pig, a sheep, maybe we can find a cow, we've got a donkey. And the idea will simply be to get them into boats, right? That's not going to be difficult in the slightest, is it? Come on, dude, be kind. I can't actually even, like, ride the boat into the donkey. We've also got to think about getting them at like the same level and the same heights. There we go, there's our first one. This is where leads are going to come in handy. Something else that will be very handy is some poison potions. I figured rather than risk not killing all of them at once, we've got enough poison potions here to assure that they're going to get their health down to half a heart. And that is because of course the poison won't actually kill them. There's something up there in the sky. And actually, there's something over here. I just flew out to a random place looking for some animals that were nearby. That looks extremely cool. Okay, a brief distraction, but we've been here before. This is uh, XP's base, and dang, that is such a cool build. Yeah, the villagers here are like uh, owning the warden, <laughs> essentially. What a cool build. So getting back to business, I don't think horses go in boats. I don't think they fit for some reason. I don't think I want to tempt fate with a hostile mob, but I am finding there's actually a lack of cows around here. Okay, I've decided to move on because there's a lack of other things in the area, but around here we got sheep, pigs, and cows, and then a village, so we could put a villager in a boat. And uh, we got a wolf here as well, which I can actually lead even if I don't tame it. Right, this is, this is a much more promising location, uh, but then, yeah, that would happen, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Dang it. Okay then, look at this. I've got to line myself up a shot and I'm just starting to wonder, can I move this boat at all? Like, ah, perfect. Just a tiny little nudge. And it's actually going to be like awkward to move this boat, right? I want to put it over there. And normally that would involve me getting in the boat. Okay, I've got Wolfie out of the picture for a minute. And of course we can leash Wolfie and bring Wolfie back over here again. Let's turn this thing. All right, just play along. Yep, okay, we got them all lined up. So as you will see here, when I drop down, this feels like it might be a little too low, like we might shoot over the wolf and the pig. First, let us not forget that I have poison. Poison for all of you, and poison for you too, my friend. And apparently me as well, that wasn't so smart. I really want to watch me, like, take the shot with the camera account, so I'm actually going to get my camera account on here with replay mod. Okay, so real important, look how low the hitbox is here. We need to keep that in mind. We're also going to line our shot up so it's the other side of the wall there. Yeah, let's load the crossbow. Okay, let's try again. Uh-huh. Dang it! <laughs> There's always something! Surely not from back here, right? Here we go. And it hit the boat and we didn't get the advancement. Dang it! So I don't think this replay is going to be as helpful as I would like. Yeah, you just see the arrow for a split second. Obviously, it hit the boats, which is not good. Hey. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. What are you doing over here? What am I doing? Great question. Um, can you guess just by looking at this monstrosity here? Uh, you're starting a farm. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to get an advancement. Oh, you're trying to line up all three in a row. Okay. Yeah, so I need five unique mobs, and I've got a pig over there, but the pig's okay. kind of short. And then I thought, <laughs> you know, a player is technically a unique mob, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So you need me to uh, get pierced. Yeah, <laughs> you, you up to... for dying? <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Yes, yeah, so if you go in with the cow, and then I can give the four of you poison. Here we go. <laughs> I have no idea if this will work, by the way. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Come on, this has got to be it. Here we go. 
The horse survived. Oh, all that work. I feel horrible. Oh, the Tango. The horse has a ton of health. That's right. I thought I got its health down because it had particle effects on it, right? Uh-huh. No. All right. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind sticking around for a minute? Sure, sure. Maybe you, you could cow? grab a boat and another help. Sheep? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Technically, the iron golem's right there. You could you could lock it in pretty good because they have a big hitbox, right? I have become he who helps others. Tango. There you go. Thank you. Oh, dropping it out of the sky. <laughs> this is so going to work now. <laughs> Now we stand around and enjoy this. Perfect. Drink. I'm half a heart. Okay. Oh my goodness me. The horse's health still going down. That's had like five poison potions on it. They've now got it's like stopped. 40 hearts. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. Can we do it? Here we go. Yes, it can be done. Oh. Yeah. Oh, but Tango, you didn't set your spawn. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear, we better go get Tango his things. I Yeah, I did actually break the bed because uh, night had passed. Hmm. Okay, Tango! Hello, hello, hello! Congratulations, Arbalist. Thank you. That is it, right? Yeah, Arbalist. Ar Arbalist. Yes, Arbalistic. Arbalistic, <laughs> that's the one. I'm an Arbalist now, I think. <laughs> I, I suppose, yeah. Sounds lofty. Sounds great. There's there's a business opportunity here, right? Like, uh, did a hermit break your bed shop? <laughs> 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 like, right here. Perfect. Little something right here. Yeah. Well, we, most seasons we have that thing where it's like the I died chest, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck on your advancements. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for the help, and Tango. Thanks for shooting me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <Goodbye>. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> so there we go, my friends. I thought it was going to be a pretty swift thing, and I've just spent the last hour trying to get that done, but it was a lot of fun, thanks to Tango. And we have also done Minecraft Science, and we have learned that you can indeed include another player as one of those unique mobs. So this whole thing gave me like a half idea for a mini game. And when an idea is fresh, it can kind of be really exciting. And then when it's not so fresh, it can be a little bit on the dull side. Anyways, here in the base area should be the right biome for a particular mob to survive. One that I could have actually included in the previous challenge that we just did. Yes, I am talking about the snow golem, of course. It is, of course, rather easy to get a large amount of these into a single space. And then you can play a game of head counts. So I know that there's 24 of them here, right? But what's the best way to shoot them? If I go up and above, we could essentially take a shot and only hit a couple of them. Or if we get them in a crowded area and line up a really good shot, then we get a whole bunch. And I believe due to the enchantment, it means the maximum you can actually hit at once is five. And look at that, they're also one hit kill. So originally I pictured us setting this up behind me twice over for two players to compete. And then you would give them free arrows and see how many golems they could clear out with those free shots. But due to a limitation of five, both players would kill a maximum of 15. So I think the greater challenge is to see who could kill these golems with the least amount of arrows. And then you need to put like a time limit on it so they don't take forever making sure every shot kills five golems at once, right? That would actually be like really simple to set up, simple to play, and potentially a lot of fun. I'm not sure if it's very skill or luck based though. So yeah, some sort of clear out the golems mini game. That's what I'm thinking. If you got any ideas, anything we could add to this to make it like more interesting, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> that old face. Totally forgot about that guy. So I played around with this idea a little further and I noticed that these drop snowballs and on occasion they'll also drop their head. So down below we can pick up those items and it could potentially be used in a scoring system. Anyway, I jotted down some notes and maybe this will get developed into a mini game. For now though, we need to travel across the Hermitcraft server. Earlier in this episode, I hinted at working with the LA's and we're gonna use them in a farm we're about to build. And this will be a flower farm, something we've built many times before over the seasons. And there are many different ways to do this. You can flush off the flowers using water. You can run a flying machine back and forth over where your flowers grow. And then there is the shifting floors method, this one being particularly fast. 
I've just realized with combination of the LAs, this might be better than what I was about to do. But I am going to show you anyway, with the exception of the last design that we saw, one of the common things is actually pretty slow to collect all of the items, right? So I was looking for a way that could potentially be faster. And what you're seeing right here is the items actually being pulled up through the blocks. So the flowers that we create end up on top of this redstone. So the question arises of how do you pick up these items when they arrive at the top? And you might just see where this is going. So I should point out a big advantage of this design is speed. I think you can run it even faster than this. And what we're doing is we're creating a lot of those items and then bringing them up to the collection area really quick. Now if done right, we can run hopper minecarts back and forth across these rails as they power and unpower. That might be tricky business, but it was at this point that I realized we could bring in the LAs. And when going through the different designs available to us, I was yet to think of that idea. So I actually think this design that we created earlier in the season might be more applicable and it's probably going to be faster than this thing over here. And this was about the most optimal speed I could get this one to run at. You might notice that there is like some visual glitches with the items and they are visual glitches. It looks like they're caught in this area down below, but as you'll see, eventually they make their way to the top. Some are actually caught in there, so this thing would need to stop when the glass blocks are raised. Well, I crafted up a whole bunch of materials for the wrong design then. There should be a way to, like, unsticky pistons, right? Now I've got to go back to the base and make a whole bunch of those. But before we do all of that, let me introduce you to the location, because it's actually close to our hermit spawn area there is a flower forest just over here in the distance it's not a big one but it might just be big enough and of course the reason we want this biome is because it's the one that loads of different types of flower generate in so does the land behind me look familiar well we're in a creative world with the same seed as the hermit craft server but all the buildings are gone and over here you'll see I've been messing around with generating flowers. There was a change since I last did this between Season 7 and Season 9, where now the flower map is actually 3D. So you can see there's loads of oxide daisies at this height, but when we go down they're not actually generating there. So this means we need to do some proper research to pick the right spots to build multiple farms so we can get all the flowers. And this is possible thanks to a data pack made by Mizuma Games and Siberian Hat. If I place this over here, you can see there's some crazy particle effects going on. And when I place the other at the end of this giant mass of land, the system will start. And already we can see it's generating in some flowers. I think the LA's might have been a mistake, a fatal distraction. First of all, just so many items being created so quickly. You know, I can expand this out and make it so that it has more hoppers, but they just throw so much stuff at it, it's never going to run through quick enough. The other thing I struggled with as well was picking like the right spots to get an equal distribution of the different types of color, because we only want to build a handful of these things and not have a crazy amount of LA's in the area. I've had to remind myself of what I'm here for, and that is primarily just the dyes. I'm not after the flowers themselves, and so I got hyper-focused on trying to get like an even distribution of flowers out of this. We are yet to build a cactus and cocoa farm, but we got the squid, we got the skeletons, we got these flowers, and with those you pretty much cover everything. The thing that we're missing is simply blue dye. So I think it makes more sense to use the other design and have it built in a strip heading down here. And then the only thing that we actually collect from it are, of course, the cornflower, which we can convert into blue dye. Aha! What's this I found here, hey? I hope you've been entertained so far, because we're about to go down a rabbit hole. So the last few hours have been a pretty typical experience for me, continuously finding a better way to do something. So I was rather impressed with this design here that would be tileable. Things would get pretty tricky when it comes to running some hopper minecarts back and forth across the top, but I was up for the challenge. And then I moved on to this design over here when I realized with extra observers that we could have the 
minecart tracks one block up so they could be permanently on and this thing still actually works pretty much the same way but then it hits me oh just put the rails underneath the farm that'll be great because then they can do all the picking up and we can actually just use pistons on either side and overall you can see we're just using so much less stuff and we're missing a piece of redstone and look at this wobbly wobbly grass right here i absolutely love how that looks it's uh, kind of hypnotic, but can you see a problem here? We're not getting any flowers, are we? That is because the dispenser has to point into the block from the side or from below. It can't point into the top of the block, and there certainly can't be a gap of air like over there. So with help from my buddy Cybot, we eventually managed to make uh, this old contraption, which is actually picking up a lot of the items and then dropping them off all the way at the end there. One of my minecarts went missing, but look at this. It drops it all off into the water. It looks so good. And yes, my observant friend, that is indeed bone meal. So while I made this pathetic thing, Cybot made an even better one over here. But it still has the same issue of ripping out some of the bone meal because, well, the track goes directly below where the dispenser is. Anyway, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. If I need to build a farm for getting the actual flowers at some point in this season... Maybe I want to open a flower shop or do something aesthetic. This thing's going to be terrific for the job. Oh yeah, look at the animation of the items here. They sort of go across to the block and then they rise up and swoosh onto the slab. It's pretty cool. So this was the final design. I started making a schematic, getting ready to bring it onto Hermitcraft and then it hit me. After hours of working on this redstone. This is not the only place that we can get corn flour from, right? We can also get it from the meadow biome. And to be fair, I totally should have thought of that the moment I realized this was actually the only thing that I needed because I'm just trying to get it so that I can have all of the dyes. So this sent me on a wild goose chase and this area here is actually the mini game area and that is the back of my base and right next to it is a meadow. But as you'll see, it's all alliums and only a few cornflowers, but this is in a different biome. And so then I played a game of location hopping and nearby another meadow. But as you see, it's pure alliums as far as the eye can see. And once again, just alliums everywhere. And it actually trails all the way around this mountainous area. Again, just alliums. But then, oh, it changes to the red flowers. So to make a long story short, this is the woodland mansion that Cub Fan blew up earlier in the season. And the mountain behind me, that's where the Crassel now exists. And it's behind here that I found this spot where finally, oh, we have the cornflower. And so here is the border between the grove biome, which doesn't actually have any flower types at all that can be grown in it, and the meadow. And so it's here that we're going to build our farm. And so I thought I'd do a quick double check because the flower biome, as I said earlier, is now 3D. So if we build it like higher up so we don't have to dig into the ground, the map is different and actually probably a little better for the cornflower. So we're going to use the farm design I showed earlier and we'll put it exactly on this 7x7 spot right here. However, that might just make a bit of an eyesore right next to the crassel. I mean, I mean crassel. And as it currently stands, this, this is an eyesore too, really. Maybe I shouldn't have built it out of blue glass. It's going to be pretty tricky to decorate and integrate and make look interesting. Yes, I, I fell in a hole again. But anyway, what you see here is actually going to work with the LAs. I have figured everything out. This, of course, means I get to keep my promise and we get to bring some LAs into the action. So time for some cheerful tunes and some duplicating. Here we go. Okay, I'll admit I didn't put on the cheeriest of tunes. This is my first time, I think, properly using this area. And it's actually quite easy, but you do have to kind of like keep an eye on the LA that you're duplicating. And with this fella, we now have two of each. I am, of course, talking about seeds and cornflowers. Now, the next question is, can we actually get them out through here? And the answer there is a resounding yes. Once you step away far enough, you sort of pull them down and through. Now we've got four of them leashed, which isn't a necessity to move these around, because, of course, you can throw the items down on the ground and then they'll follow you and pick them up. And I've, I've left the music playing. I must remember to come back and change that. So it should be a, a pretty pleasant, straightforward journey, right? However, it's wooded all of the way there, which is potentially going to cause some blockages with these LAs. 
So this is where I actually give up on the leads. If I just fly over here, technically they should follow me, but I can also just throw down a few items and that way we'll keep them all together. Aha, it's so simple, see? We've still got all four of them. So I pick my next landing spot, throw a few of these down. Moving them around is easy, that's what I'm trying to communicate right now. And as I walk along now, I'm just throwing down a couple of seeds and cornflowers for them to pick up as they follow me. It's, it's actually really, really easy stuff. Ah, now moments later we have arrived, but I need to disable this, which just involves breaking the block, basically. And now I need to get them in there, but also to stay in there, which will certainly be tricky. I can do a little bit of this, but I've also got to juggle placing some of these glass blocks and getting them inside of what is an essentially a cage. And you, my friend, you're... Wait, you're not holding anything. Dang it, how did you get out? Oh, I see. They can actually, like, escape where the note block was, so we'll need to close that off. Okay, they are all in there, and now is really the moment of truth. Step back, one, two, three, four. Wonderful, we've done it. Oh, and now they're chucking the items into here. And I get to show you all the fancy redstone I've created. So now we turn the contraption on. We get lots of cornflowers and seeds. And where do they go? Well, you know, they go over there, basically. And there they are, right on cue. All of the items that got picked up get delivered to this spot. You know, maybe one day we'll put in some hoppers and some storage. So below the hopper is a hopper minecart, and that's there to pull out the items from the hopper really quickly. And then it's this hopper down below that sucks all of them out really quickly as well, and then we go into one of these unloading systems. So you'll notice there's some additional redstone to make it sit there for a moment so it can pick all of that up. So everything that goes into the hopper up top gets sucked out really quickly because of the use of minecart hoppers, and that way we can keep up with the speed. So down the bottom here, we take a pulse from the bone mill dispenser and we create an on state using a comparator redstone clock. That's for when the farm is running. So when we turn it off, it will eventually unpower, the torch will turn on and it stops the hopper minecart from going back and forth. So we'll see it do one more run and now it gets parked down here. Now how awesome and amazing has this contraption turned out to be? Oh, and look at that, we got a... <laughs> Uh, a whole bunch of items right here. Yep, that's filled up my inventory. But yes, in my quest for dyes, all I needed from the flower farm was the blue dye, and now we got it in abundance. And this wouldn't be right without a recycling station, right? And we can dump all of the seeds into here and get some bone mill back. Speaking of bone mill, the place to refill this farm is from this barrel, and then on the opposite corner, there's another barrel too. And I am absolutely chuffed of how this project turned out. The only regret? Using blue glass, you know, I kind of want to replace it with a different color so I can make this aesthetically more interesting at some point, and I think this is just too contrasty. And I've done all my redstone for today, but if we had a comparator hooked up to that hopper that could send a signal down here to, let's say, override this clock, which would actually be quite simple, then this thing would continuously run until the hopper is empty. That actually sounds like a really good idea, but I'm done over here for today. So, finally back at the base where I have some plans to build a cactus and a cocoa bean farm. Somewhere around here, I don't know where yet, but I do have something to report on. I tore down the QR code that had been sitting above the commercial area. Props to TJ Todd for that idea and sharing the QR code with me. And yes, the fun is over. I had to give up the QR code, but did you notice something? Were you paying attention? That was just me building it in reverse. Oh, looks like I've trolled some of you twice. This is actually the time lapse of me tearing it down. So now it is indeed gone from the commercial area. And for those of you that never scanned it, you'll never know what you've given up on. Anywho, all thanks as always for sharing ideas with me. It's always appreciated. And before you go, be sure to check out linktree.assuma.co. There is some new content that is on there for you to check out. It has been highlighted. So go visit the website, bookmark it and uh, check out what I've uploaded to one of my other channels. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.